You know how I like my fire? Hot. Hey! What's up, my peoples? I'm Go here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the TFEVO Hot Fire! So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So at the front here, we just have some line art here of Hot Fire, and on the side, you just have more of the picture. Joking hazard, warning! Please don't eat anything in this box, it could be very bad for you. On the bottom, you just have the rest of the line art. On the other side of the box, you just have the rest of the line art, TFEVO. On the top here, Hot Fire! And on the back of the box, we have uh, QR codes that don't work, at least not any time I've tried to scan them. Maybe they'll work now, maybe they'll work for you. Here, try to scan them, see if they work. They would not work for me, don't know why, they would not work for me. Anything else I try to scan works perfectly fine, these will not work for me. I don't know, but things, stuff, things, stuff, blah 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 and that's basically it for the packaging. And moving right along, here we have Hot Fire, a.k.a. The Last Night Hot Rod, or Hot Rod. And, um, oh, I have my issues with this figure. I still have my issues with this figure. Um, he looks great, as you can see. I mean, he looks like, he totally looks like movie Hot Rod. So, I mean, that I think they did a great job on. It's just other things that definitely could have been done better. <laughs> but, looks great. Gets two thumbs up for looking great. That's pretty much all I can give it, but <laughs> that's getting close here. So we can take a look at that noggin. That is the noggin. You can see it's a very nicely done head sculpt, in my opinion. You got some gunmetal gray right up top here. You got the orange on the mouth. Um, as you can see, there is there is light piping. It doesn't work all that well. It really does need like a direct, I mean like a direct light. There you go. You can see the eyes glow a nice blue, but as you can see without that, you can barely see the eyes. So his eyes always just look black in any other condition. Unless you have that direct light right on top of it. So yeah, that doesn't work too well. Um, you can see you got some bits here done in a nice gun metal gray. You got some nice silver going down the chest. You got the trans clearing plastic there for the headlights. These are packed separately and they just uh, peg right in. This was the easy thing to peg on. Uh, <laughs> you got a lot of nice detail here for the abdomen done in a nice gun metal gray. And the orange. The arms, as you can see, very nicely detailed. Got his hands. There's his crotch, there's his legs. Again, all of it done in a nice gunmetal gray, so it does look very, very good. Nice. This glossy orange there with some gunmetal gray. His feet, as always, cat hair not included. Get out of here. And going up the back, you can see it is a pretty clean transformation. He's got his door wings back here, and <laughs> this is one of the problems I have. Uh, <laughs> You can see even his back is uh, actually very nicely detailed as well and done in gunmetal gray with some bits of silver in there as well. And uh, yeah, um, as you can see, one of my issues with this figure just presented itself. Um, his hands uh, don't stay on. They're on mushroom pegs, but they don't they don't stay on. There is next to no friction. I mean, they I mean they won't just fall out. They will fall out when you're transforming it, but like it doesn't take much for them to just come right off. Um, and there's no, like, like I said, there's no locking point. There's no real friction here. Usually with a mushroom peg, when you push it in, there's that, there's, there's that thoop. You feel that thoop. You feel that locking point. That's not present here. It's just a slot. And, you know, I've pushed this thing to the point where I feel like I'm going to break the peg and... There's no soup. It just it just sits in there, and you know there's just not enough friction to actually hold the hands on, so they just come right off, which definitely sucks. I don't know if that's just my copy or that's going to be a widespread thing. I don't know, but either way, it sucks. Um, his head is just pegged on, 
and his head and his hands were just rolling around in the box because his head doesn't really hold on all that securely. Again, it won't just it won't just fall off, but it takes nothing to just pull it right off. And like I said, it was rolling around in the box, so apparently during shipping, it just got knocked off of his body. So yeah, that could have been a little better secured, as well as the hands. This figure does actually come with stickers as well. Yes, you get stickers with this toy, uh, and it's for this back section here of his legs. This bit right here um, gets a sticker, and I can totally understand why they didn't paint this piece, because having watched people transform this toy and having transformed it myself, I know why they didn't paint this part, because this that, that paint would have been totally scratched up to all crap, and yeah, it makes sense. And even the sticker I put on here totally got mangled, so really it's better to just not even put the sticker on it. I ended up taking the sticker off because it got mangled up anyway. But the funny thing is, is they, they, they gave me two sheets of stickers, and they're all for the left side. You see, this is the one that I originally put on. That's a left side sticker. That's, that's a left side sticker. And here's the other sheet. Look, that's a left side sticker, and that is also a left side sticker. They gave me four left side stickers, but no right side sticker. So even if I wanted to put these on, I, 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 I couldn't because they only gave me stickers for one side. Anyway, but like I said, just due to the way this thing transforms, you probably don't want to put the stickers on them anyway because they'll get mangled up. But, hey, it's a thing. It's a thing to note. So, let's run through the articulation here. Articulation-wise, the head is on a ball joint, so you do get your good wiggly-waggly. Can look up, can look down, can do a full 360. You can pull his head clean off if you want to. <laughs> Uh, arms can do a full 360, can go in and out only that far. Uh, you do have bicep rotation, you do have 90 degrees of a bend there at the elbow, you do have wrist. <laughs> you have wrist rotation if the hand will stay on. You also have an uh, inward joint here that's more for transformation, but you can make use of that if you want to. Uh, the hands are articulated. Uh, the thumb is on two hinges, and the index finger is a separate piece, also on two hinges, and the other three fingers are just one piece, also on two hinges, there. So we can give you a thumbs up, hey, and then pull his hand right off. <laughs> uh, he does have waist rotation. Uh, this crotch panel here can move up to accommodate the leg movement. Legs can go forward, that far, back, that far, outward, almost a full splits. You do have thigh rotation. You have a double jointed knee. It gives you slightly over 90 degrees of bend there. You can also bend his knee forward if you want to make him look like he broke his leg. And the feet, um, they can't really move up, but they can move down due to transformation. You do get full amounts of ankle tiltage there, and you even get a, uh, a toe joint here. And his feet like to come apart. There you go. And you've got a bit of a toe joint there, if you need it. As far as accessories go, he does include his gun, which allows him to stop the time. And it's actually very nicely done, nicely detailed. Done in a gunmetal gray. Looks quite good. And you can put this in his hand. I'll just take his hand off anyway. <laughs> and it's the typical tab in the slot in the palm method of weapon holding. And this actually does hold on very securely. Just wrap his fingers around it. There you go. He's got his time gun there so he can pew pew, bang bang, stop Z time, stop Z time. So. That looks nice. That looks nice on him. So there you have that. And now for comparison. Here it is with the Deluxe Last Night Hot Rod. Yes, you can see how they look with one another. There he is with Alien Attacks. Optimus Prime. As you can see. Now they scale together. Here he is with Masterpiece Movie Bumblebee. You can see there how he scales with the Bumblemeister. Here he is with Masterpiece Movie Optimus Prime. 
This is my knockoff version, but it's the same toy. So, I have that. And, last but not least, just because, here it is with Unique Toys Lockdown. Now, the reason I'm starting this video with him in robot mode is because going from robot to car mode is the part that I'm sure people are going to have the most trouble with. It was the part I had the most trouble with. Um, because this figure does not come with instructions. I'm going to take a wild guess at those QR codes maybe link you to instructions, but they don't work for me for whatever reason. The TFEVO YouTube page does have an instructional video on how to transform this guy, but the guy in the video looks like he's confused too, so it wasn't all that helpful. And other videos that I saw on YouTube, they apparently did not believe in close-ups, so, you know, it was helpful enough. I can get the gist of how to transform it, and I think I pretty much got the transformation down, and like I said, since you don't actually get instructions with this toy, I figured I would go from robot to car, because that's definitely what people are, I'm sure, going to need the most help with. So, we're, we're going to get through this. This is, this is not going to be fun. This is one of those transformations that's not all that fun, but we'll get through it. Let me just take his hand off so I can take the gun out. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? Let me just take his hands off, because he's going to fall off anyway while I'm transforming him, so we're just going to take them off. We'll just take his hands off. It's kind of... Uh... <laughs> unwilling parts forming but you know hey it's just the way this works but anyway okay so we're going to start off with the legs and then move on to the upper body so to get the legs uh prepped we're just basically going to do some prep work with the legs uh so to get the legs ready to go here you just want to take this back section here this cast section and just untab it you can see there is there's a tab that just goes into a slot right up in there then you untab this section Right here, you see the tab just goes right in there. So you just bring all this out. Then you take the section here and just rotate it around like that. And this little panel right here, you just want to bring that up like so. You want to take this little silver bit right here and this will just rotate up, allowing you to take this section and slide it over. So with the foot now, you're going to take it and just rotate it all the way around. Rotate it 180. And you want to take the heel and just bring it down. It's on double hinge, so just bring it down like that. Take this metal section here and just bring this forward like so. And then you're going to take the foot and you're just going to bring it up and then bring it over to the side like that. Once you've done that, you just take this assembly here and you just bring it down and this will peg in right in there. So you just line all that up and you just peg that together like so. And we're getting there. Now this part you will need a tool for. Um, there is this little piece. There is this little, little piece right here that you have to get and you have to flip it out. And you definitely need a tool for this. Just kind of get in there and just kind of push this bit out. There we go. Take that and just bring that over and that will hold the wheel in place. So you got that done. So now we come here to the thigh here. This already came undone for me, but you just want to untab this section from this section. Just bring the leg out so you can take this whole assembly here and just swing it around. It's just on a big double hinge. Just swing it around and bring it out. This little bit right here, you just kind of want to bring to the inside of the leg. This little panel right here is on a double hinge, so you just kind of want to bring that up and out as much as you can, like that. And we pretty much got that leg all ready to go, second verse, just like the first. All right, so we got the legs ready to go, so now we will just move on. Uh, you wanna take his crotch plate here, and that will just shift downward like that, and these sections right here will just angle down like so. And we're gonna come to the backpack here. We just untab, it just tabs in right back there. Extend all this around. Like that, just straighten that out. This section right here, you just want to just pull out 
and all that will just extend. It's on multiple hinges there, and you can kind of see how everything is kind of supposed to sit in there when you're going into robot mode. Just pull all that out and extend it and just get all that out of the way. So now we want to come back here. We want to take these little panels right here and just raise them up and that will allow us to untab the arms. The arms just tab in right up in here. So bring that up, bring the arm down. We can now take these little sections here next to his head and they will just swing in like that. And now that we got that done, we're going to take these little side panels here, just kind of pop them out. We want to take the sides of the hood here and they will untab and slide out like that. And this center section here will just untab right from in here. So it just tabs in right in there. So you just bring that up and you can see the center portion of the hood here is right in there. So you just want to bring this out like that. And now you want this section to end up on top of this section. So you kind of just have to do some kind of flipping around here just to get all this into position. Just kind of do some flippy flippies and just try to manipulate things as best you can. This is on a double hinge too, so that kind of helps get things around. There we go, like that. So basically you want this ending up underneath with the silver side facing you. So once we've got all that done, we can now take the head, turn it around, and that will just tuck right in here, like so. And you can see his little snout just kind of pokes out the bottom there. So now we have all that situated. We can now take the hood and just tab it all together, like so. And this section here, we just kind of want to leave out for now because now we got to work on the arms. So for the arms, you really need things to not be in your way and that's not really going to happen, but all right. Okay, anyway, it's not a fun transformation. Not a fun transformation, anyway. So, uh, okay, let's put his hands back on. So at this point now, let's put his hands back on and you just want to rotate them and bring them in. So this orange piece is on the bottom part of the forearm here. And then you want to take these panels right here and split them and bring them out to the sides like so. And this top panel is always really stiff. Let's bring that out as far as it will go. Um, this panel here does have a little tab. I don't know how well you see it. It's just a little tab in there that will just tab in to a slot right in there. So you got that, then you take the wheel and that will just shift forward. You want to take the bicep section here and you want to rotate it out. So now that screw is facing you and then rotate the arm back in. So that's how you want that oriented there like that. Now you're going to take the shoulder section. This front panel right here will just rotate around like that. You take this, you want to bring it down. It's on a double hinge. So this will just shift in like so. And once you have all that done, oh, one more little step you have to do here, this little bit right here on the side of his body, you have to take this and you have to rotate it around, rotate it all the way around. So it sits like that. Let me do that on the other side before I forget. And this one's way tighter. So just bring that around, bring that around, bring that around. So it sits like that. There you go. So once you have that done, you can now take the arm and just bring it down and bring it in and just get this out of your way and all this should sit right in there and tuck right in there like that. And once you've done that, this section right here will just fold in like that. So, second verse, just like the first, 
Okay, so we got both arms tucked in there now. Now the center piece, there is that tab right there, and it's going to tab into this inner slot right in here. So just bring that in, and just tab that in like that, and that will hold this whole hood assembly in place. It actually does a good job of it. Then you take these panels here, and just flip them in like so, and we got that part all done. So now we want to take this windshield section here. We got this little panel that you want to flip out like that. You can see there's a slot right there. And it will go over this tab right here. So just make sure you have everything situated here. You want these little silver bits right here. You want these flipped back like that. And then you just... Take this and just bring it down. You can see you kind of have to shift. You want to shift all this down like so. And then just get that tabbed in, push it up. And that will just sit right there like so. So now that we have that done, now it's time for the, well, we're, we're not at the not so fun part yet. Not that much of this has been fun, but <laughs> we'll kind of get this whole roof section here ready to go. So you take these armatures here and you just extend them. This section right here, you want to pull out, rotate, slide it back in. And on mine, the plastic has like some gouges in it, which is not too good, but oh well. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to take this section here and just rotate it in the door will come out and then rotate around you can just bring that down so everything sits flush like that same thing with the other side you just bring that around bring that out rotate around just bring it down on the double hinge and then you just take the two halves and they will tab together like so so now we're going to take Get this out of the way. So now you want to take this and drop it down. The thing is, there's a trick here. These little bits right here, you want to bring them up because these bits have to sit on top of this armature here. So bring this down and then these will sit on top of that, as you can see. These little bits will sit right on top. You have to make sure they shift all the way in as far as they can go. Otherwise, it will knock things out of alignment more than they will be anyway. But, just bring them in. All the way in, like that. Okay, got it? Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? Okay. I hope you can. So now, at this point, we can now drop the roof down. And this is on a double hinge, so you just bring it down on this hinge and bring it back on this hinge. And you just have two tabs that will go underneath the windshield here. So just bring it down. Just kind of drop that in. Ow! That stabbed me. These little points right here, they're sharp. Be careful. Ow! <sighs> bring that down. Another thing that makes it not fun is the risk of impaling yourself. Ha 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 ha! <clears throat> So, bring this down. Make sure these little bits here just kind of stay out of the way as much as you can get them out of the way. And you have tabs that are going to tab in right in here to secure these sections into place. Bring that down. And just pop that into place. Come on. There we go. There we go. For some reason, this side on mine now doesn't like to stay tabbed in. It stayed tabbed in just fine before, but now it likes to fight me. And I don't know why, because I think I have everything in place. Well, this is not in place, but it's going to get in place at some point. This is the part of the transformation that is so not fun. It's when you actually have to try to put all this together now. Okay, and that came undone. All right, this is the fun part. <laughs> it's not, it's not fun, it's not fun. 
Okay, so I think we got all that situated there. Okay, okay, we can get all this. All this will stay together once we get the rest of it together, hopefully, anyway. So, okay, now we have another not so fun part here. So, now you want to take this panel and you want to bring it up. So you can see there is a tab there that's going to go right in here, and there is a tab here that's going to go underneath this panel. And doing this, not fun, not fun. It's doable, but it's not fun. And you just have to kind of... And you don't exactly have room to work either, which is not a great thing either. This is doable. It's totally doable. I swear to you, it's doable. You know what happened? It's, just at the, it's on a double hinge, and on this one it's tight. There we go. Shift it up. There we go. And just try to get that tab in and get it popped over this panel right here. And hopefully, hopefully, if your heart is pure, and you believe in fairies, everything <laughs> will go right where it's supposed to go. There we go. Now we have that in place. That's an ordeal. That's definitely an ordeal. And there's no real easy way to do that. It's just, that's just the way you have to do it. Okay, so you know what we're going to do now? We're just going to move on to this panel. Now... Here's another tricky part, which is not fun at all, is now you have to take this panel and this has to basically go over this panel and in the process you can maybe knock this panel out of place. <clears throat> so it kind of helps to just kind of hold this in place, just kind of put your thumb right here and just take this and just swing this up and pray to God. And you also, see? <laughs> And there's also a peg. There's a peg right here that's going to go into this port right there. So you have a couple things you need to worry about here. Trying to get things in place, trying to get things lined up, trying to get that lined up. That popped out, so you can kind of get your finger in there. And just kind of pop that back where it needed to be. Get that into place. Squeeze all that together. This wheel likes to move. Actually, both the front wheels like to move because they don't actually. there's no actual locking point for this. So that's no good. So, there you go. All right, so we got everything situated on this side. You stay. So you got everything situated on this side. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we got this side situated now. Now both sides are where they need to be. So we're at the home stretch now. So now what you want to do is you want to take the legs. You can see they're on a big double hinge here. So you just want to take the legs and uh, shift them in. One thing that you have to note, this little... This little silver bit right here, you don't want this to flip back down and it wants to kind of stay in place as you're folding the leg in. But this little silver bit, you want to stay up. You want that there. Don't let it move. Don't let it move. Don't let it breathe. Keep it where it is. And you also want to kind of clear this part here as well. Clear this part. This can be a little annoying as well. And I can see this eventually starting to scrape paint off. But this is kind of... Honestly, this is like the easiest of the hard ways to transform this. So it's, I don't know. Anyway, again, make sure that just, make sure that little silver bit stays up. Bring that up. And this is going to tab in right to this section right here. So once you get all that situated, bring that up. That will tab in right there like that. And stay. There you go. Okay. So we got that done. Do the other side now. So again, just kind of shift all this in. Again, make sure that silver piece, the silver piece, stay up, silver piece. I don't like you, silver piece. Stay where I tell you to, silver piece. Okay. Just bring that up like so. And just get this tabbed in. This is probably going to move out of place while you're doing all that, but that's okay. We'll pop all that back in where it needs to go with some tools because you need tools for this. You need tools for this toy. So, Go to your home. Go to your home. Why won't you go to your home? 
Come on. You can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. There we go. See, I knew you could do it. I knew you could do it. All right. So now that we've done that, we got these tabs that will go into this slot right here. So just drop that down. And that should all just tab in right up in there. Right up in there. Right up in there. There we go. Tab right up in there. And there we go. Now, if you notice, some of these panels have now shifted around, which is quite, quite annoying. And it does help to kind of get your tool and just kind of pop all these panels back up so everything just kind of sits flush like it's supposed to. There we go. And there you pretty much got hot rod, hot fire. This annoying thing into vehicle mode. The last thing you want to do is just take the side view mirrors here and just rotate them out. The side view mirrors are also packed separately and these things are so annoying. It took me about 15 minutes just to get these side view mirrors pegged in because the either the post, either the port was too small or the post was too big, but I ended up having to shave the post down so I could actually get these plugged in. So it took me about 15 minutes just to get the side view mirrors plugged into this toy. So right out of the box. Just loads of fun, loads of fun. But now you basically have hot fire in vehicle mode. Now, one more thing you want to try to do anyway, it doesn't seem like it's a necessity, but you can see like the bottoms of the feet do tab together and this is not easy to make happen. So I, I wouldn't fight with it too much. It's kind of doable. You can see it, it tabs together enough, but anyway. But then you basically have them in vehicle mode. There it is. And it actually is rolling pretty well. Actually, most of the time I have trouble getting it to roll. You can see this back wheel's not hooking up, and it's probably not hooking up because this is probably sitting a little too low, as you can see. And that's one weird thing about this figure is that there's kind of a trick to... There's even a trick to getting all the wheels to hook up. And basically, like... You want to take these big orange sections here and just kind of like push them down. Just kind of push them in as much as you can. Of course, when you do that, it makes this gap right here open up. So what I found is after you push these down, just kind of put it on the surface and then just kind of hold the figure down and then take the back and raise it back up. And that will, you know, it'll keep the gap to a minimum anyway, but now... As you can see, those wheels will hook up. For some reason, this wheel just doesn't like to roll. All the other wheels do roll very smoothly. This wheel is kind of stiff, so this wheel will not always roll as freely as the other ones. And it still feels like there's something dragging under here, but I mean, there's no other way to tuck anything any more tucked than it already is. So it's just kind of a pain in the butt. And again, these panels just kind of like to just tuck themselves underneath this panel, even though it's not supposed to. And yeah, this is this is what makes this toy not fun is because things just kind of don't want to stay. Even after you get them where they need to go, they'll move on you. And overall, man, this ugh, transformation is definitely not what I would call enjoyable. But anyway, there is the vehicle mode. He has a Lamborghini. Very nice Lamborghini with the black and the orange trim. We're getting close here. So we can take a look at the details. You got a nice trans clearance windshield and windows. You got nice silver there for the rims. You got the nice orange there on the back. You got some silver there for the tailpipes. You also have some trans clearance plastic right back here as well. And again, this is all just kind of not wanting to sit flush because it hates me. It hates me. And the feeling is kind of mutual. Anyway, it's the best I can do. It's the best I can do. As far as the weapon goes, there isn't any storage for the weapon. I don't believe anywhere. I mean, there's definitely nowhere under here for this to go. There's nowhere. It doesn't seem like there's anywhere up here to plug it into. So apparently there's no weapon storage for it. So there you have that. And for comparison, here it is with the Deluxe last night Hutrud. So you can see how they look together. 
Here he is with Alien Attacks. Age of Extinction slash Last Night. Optimus Prime, make me transform that thing again! <laughs> anyway, so you can see how they scale with one another. Uh, here he is with Masterpiece Movie Bumblebee. So you can see how he scales there with the Bumblemeister. Here he is with Masterpiece Movie Optimus Prime. So you can see how he scales with that particular version. And just because, here he is with Unique Toys locked down. So you can see how they look together. So there you have the TF EVO, or TF EVO, I'm not sure how you're supposed to say it, but there you have Hot Fire. This figure definitely has its issues. Um, the, the robot mode is where this figure really shines. I mean, he looks great in robot mode. Um, it does suck that, at least on my copy, the hands just don't want to stay on. Again, I don't know if that's just my copy or if that's going to be a widespread thing. Either way, it sucks. It would have been nice to actually get instructions with this toy, or at least instructional videos that were more helpful. That would have helped a great deal. The transformation is definitely not very enjoyable, especially the, the rear section of the car here, like getting all that together is just a pain in the butt. And even when you get everything where it needs to go, it's still not totally together and the panels still just kind of want to go where they want to go instead of where they're supposed to go. <laughs> so you're constantly having to fight with it and you always end up still kind of losing. So the engineering definitely could have been a lot more smooth, a lot more fluid, a lot more user friendly. If there's one thing I really don't like is a toy I have to fight with to transform. I shouldn't have to fight with it. The process should be enjoyable, not a battle. Um, so that's definitely something that this company needs to improve upon. Don't be like other third-party companies that seem to have this mentality of, well, at least it transforms, you know? No, make the process smooth and enjoyable. That should be key. Make it enjoyable. Don't make it a chore. So my final verdict on this figure is this. Um, if you're just looking for a display piece, if you just want a movie hot rod to put on your shelf and say, hey, look, it's movie hot rod, this figure can do that. This figure does that very, very well. Does a great job at that. But if you want a figure that you're actually going to enjoy messing with, I would say wait for the DX9 slash Unique Toys version of this guy, because I'm sure that one will actually work better and be a lot, uh, a lot more enjoyable to mess with. If this is this company's first figure, which I believe it is, you know, I, I will cut them some slack, but I will definitely say um, they still have some homework to do. They definitely still have some homework to do. So I hope they take what they learned from this figure. Now that this figure has reached, you know, mass release, I hope they take all the feedback that they get, and I'm sure they're going to get a lot of feedback. <laughs> I hope they take all the feedback that they get and apply it to their future releases, and hopefully from here on out, every figure they put out will get better and better and better. That's the hope anyway. So we'll see what happens. And that's just my opinion. What's yours? Sound off. So there you go. Now I pick this up from a TF Direct. I'll put a link to their site in the description down below so you can check that out. You can also pick up this figure from BigBadToyStore.com. I'll also put a link to their site in the description down below so you can check that out as well. You can also check out my third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the TFEVO Hot Fire. And this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud. Boom in your face. Rook Bumblebee, there is Megatron. Are you crazy? You cannot fight him on your own! No! B! Don't do this! Oh no! Don't worry! I will stop the time! Oh no! Oh no, that looks like it's going to hurt! Come with me, little bug! Come, come with me! Ow! Ow! Where'd he go?